Hi, and welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric, and this is part three of our table lamp. We are going to work on the textures, which is going to be definitely more fun than working on the UVs. So let's start out by going into our Hypershade. So Window, Rendering Editors, over to Hypershade. And we're just going to go ahead and create everything that we need. I'm going to pull up the Outliner just to kind of help us out here. So we've got our table, and we've got our lamp, which has got a lamp shape lamp shade and a lamp base and post and our picture and we got a wall alright let's start at the top and just work our way down so we need a wall so what I'm gonna do is let's create a Lambert rename this to wall shdr underscore wall so there's our wall we need one for our table so let's use a blend so rename that to shdr underscore table. We need our lampshade. Let's do a Lambert. Right click, rename shdr underscore lampshade. Now you can name these however you want to. But any of my tutorials, feel free to name whatever makes more sense to you or um, just whatever you feel is the best way of naming. Next is we've got our lamp base post. Let's do a blend for those. Right click, rename. Up, oh, right click, rename. There it goes. SHDR underscore lamp post. Let's see, we got a picture. We need our picture frame, our pictures. Let's do a Lambert for our picture. Right click, rename. You can also use a blend for the picture if you want to, since if you look at a photograph, they're usually kind of glossy. All right, I'm just going to use a Lambert and I'm going to call it SHDR underscore picture. And we need our picture frame. Let's do a blend, rename to SHDR underscore picture frame. And glass, we need glass. Let's create a blend for the glass. So right click, rename, shdr underscore picture glass. All right, so we've got seven materials we just created. All right, let's bring this all to the left. Now let's start working with attributes to start making all this uh, make sense. I want to reorganize these a little bit different. I'll put them on top of each other. All right, start with the top one. Can I make this window a little bigger so I can scale up a little more? Okay, our wall, we're going to use a bump map for our wall. So I'm going to double click on the, the wall shader node over here. It's going to open up the attributes for it. The color, I'm going to make the wall just white. Okay, we're going to use a bump map. So over here in the left, I need to scroll down all the way to the general utilities. There it is. And there is a bump 2D node. I'm just going to click on it. It puts a bump down here. It's going to move that next to our wall shader. And we're going to use a fractal for the bump. So let me go back up to the top. There's fractal underneath the 2D textures. I'm going to click that. Just move all those in a row. All right. So we need to attach our fractal to the bump. So I'm going to middle mouse drag the fractal onto the bump node. And I'm going to choose default. Now I'm going to middle mouse drag the bump onto our shader node and select bump map. So now all those are connected and that is done. Let's go to the next one which is our table. We're going to use a file for our table so let's over here on the left click on file. Let's move those next to our shader and I'm going to click on the file node so we got the attributes over here on the right. There's image name the far right we're going to click on that little button with a folder that's going to allow us to browse our computer and there's our checkerboard pattern. My just initially looks in the source images folder. So there's our pattern. Click open. Now that's attached to our file node. So now let's attach our file node by middle mouse dragging it onto the table shader. And actually I got the wrong file, but that's okay. We'll, we'll fix that. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. We're going to replace the gray color with our file. There we go. All right, I'm going to click back onto the file node. 
click on that button again and we want our table texture which is right there is this a table yes yeah, shader table so open all right so that's all fixed now the next one down is the lamp shade we're going to use a file for it so i'm going to click on file click on the file node you can go ahead and middle mouse drag it over and plug it into the color if you want to uh, then just select the file node open the attribute editor click on the button with the folder there is our lamp shade click open next one down is our lamp post so we're going to use a file click on file node browse lamp post texture middle mouse drag it and color next one is our picture so we're going to use a file for it as well so let's bring a file node over select our file node here's the attributes click on the button with the folder select our picture middle mouse drag our file node onto our shader and plug it into the color next one down is our picture frame uh, we're just going to use a black color so I'm going to select the picture frame shader after you enter I'm just going to make the color not quite black just kind of backing it off a little bit reflectivity I'm gonna maybe knock it down to let's say I don't know maybe 0.05 somewhere around there that's good for it now uh, glass shader same thing we're not gonna use a file we're just gonna make the color black the transparency I'm gonna put it all the way up and just back it down just a little bit and let's see the that's probably pretty good. I think the specular color I'm going to bring down quite a bit. And the reflectivity, I'm going to bring it down to maybe about 0.2. And I think that's all I'm going to do. All right, so all of our textures are done. We just need to apply those to our object. So now let's go, well, I guess I should have left that open. It kind of makes some more room here. Uh, we can do this two ways. We can select everything in our view panel here. Uh, one at a time or we can use our uh, outliner the outliner is really a great efficient way of working there's no mistake of what you're selecting uh, so it's just a really good way so we'll just use that let me open up my hypershade back up so windows rendering editors hypershade here's our materials now if you wanted to bring that stuff back down in the work area just select something like for instance this uh, picture shader here I can just select it up here above it there's three buttons there's a input connections, input output, and an output connections. So if I click on this input connections, you'll see it shows all the inputs to that shader. So there's our file node, there's the 2D texture, just like you saw before. So if you ever wanted how to get these back, that's how you do it. Okay. Um, there's a couple ways that we can do this. Let me try to make this so you can see everything as much as possible here. We'll start with the wall. We can select our wall. We can right click on our wall. We can go down to assign existing material. And then we can look for our wall shader, which is right there, shader underscore wall. And now it's applied. Another way we can do it is by just middle mouse dragging a shader onto our object. So here's our lamp shader. I can just middle mouse drag it onto our lamp and then drop it right on there. Another way we can do it is we can select our objects. So this lamp post, shift select the lamp base since we're getting the same texture. And now I can, here's our lamp post right click on it and select assign material to selection so those are some uh, different ways you can assign your textures all right the table let's select all the pieces of our table or we can just select it over here in our outliner so i'm just going to select the group here's our table shader right click assign material to selection our picture right click assign material to selection picture frame Here's our picture frame shader. Right click, assign material to selection. Here's the picture glass. And there's our glass shader. Right click, assign material to selection. So everything now has been assigned. And before we end this or include this part of the tutorial, the bump map on our wall, we can't see it. But one way we can just look at it real quick to see if we need to make any adjustments is right above here there's a high quality icon or you can just go to your render and then go down to high quality rendering. When you click that 
we can now see the bump, which is way too much. So let's lower that down. Let's go back into our hypershade. So Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Here's our wall shader. So let's click it. I'm going to go up here and click on the input connections. And here is our bump node. I'm just going to double click on it. And now over here in the Attribute Editor, you'll see the bump depth. Right now it's 1. I want to lower that down a lot. So let's try 0.1. And let's see what that looks like. Let me get this so we can see our wall. Okay, it still looks like a, uh, definitely too much still. If I zoom in here, it's definitely way too much bump. So let's knock it down to say, let's cut that in half, 0.05. Still too much. Let's do 0.01. All right, that's looking a lot better. Still maybe a little too much. 0 0.005. I think that's too far. 0 0.007. All right, that's doesn't look too bad right there. I think so. We'll go with that initially, and then when we start getting into our rendering, then we'll know better how to adjust it. And that concludes this tutorial. So let's do a file save scene as. Let's save this as lampshade underscore three underscore texturing. Save. All right, I'll see you in the next part, which we will start adding lights. Thanks for watching.